Welcome everyone to this week's edition of Military Trailblazer Office Hours. Thanks for taking time out of your Wednesday evening to spend it here in the spirit of community, mentorship, and learning. The focus for tonight's session is exploring customer success roles and career paths. And so what I'd like to do is uh, welcome and briefly introduce our two co-hosts for tonight's session, Hilary Zarenjad and Sue Marriott. Hilary is a senior principal success manager at Salesforce. She has deep experience in the healthcare and life sciences vertical, has previous experience as a marketing manager, and is a Marine Corps veteran. Sue is a success manager director at Salesforce. She's worked in a wide range of both technical and non-technical roles during her career in the ecosystem, including system admin, solutions architect, and success engagement director. It's great to have you both here co-hosting Office Hours with me. Welcome. In the spirit of kicking things off in a fun way, um, I hope you find it uh, as amusing as I did, and I hope you are somewhere cozy and warm uh, as we get through our presentation today. So literally an icebreaker uh, for uh, for today. So uh, welcome uh, to everyone here and thank you for your time uh, today. So here's a uh, you know wild ride of, of Sue Marriott. Um, I, I started out with a love uh, for water and boating and it led me to um, work for Raytheon and I was there for for a long time. I was really on the road um, a lot and uh, found myself uh, at a, um, a SaaS company uh, called Intergist, got off the road for a bit um, and really started to um, implement Salesforce for the first time. So implemented Sales Cloud and um, as a side job, I was called an also admin. I don't know if that uh, term rings a bell with anyone, um, but that's kind of the start of my journey. You can see uh, I put the Kool-Aid um, uh, sort of <laughs> character there because that's when I really started to to drink the Salesforce Kool-Aid. Um, many of you probably uh, know what that means. Um, and because life is cruel, um, I had just bought my own home, uh, my first home, and um, I my company got bought out. And I was faced with the opportunity to move to Texas or to get laid off. And nothing wrong with Texas. Um, but it just was not right for me. Um, I wanted to stay in Maryland. So here I was laid off, you know, mortgage payments and didn't know what to do. So I, I put, um, you know, the icon of me going all in Salesforce. I did not start a gambling habit. I want you guys to know that poker chips are not significant, uh, sign significant of me going into uh, to gambling, but um, it is me betting on myself. Um, and so I started networking. I started um, researching. I started going to Salesforce Ben. I started going to focus on force. And I really started to build things. I took a certification class. I took the week-long class. Um, and I le it led me to um, enterprise. And I landed at Enterprise Community Partners. Um, nationwide uh, nonprofit based in Maryland um, in community housing. It handles $20 billion in housing assets and is um, in the lo low income housing tax credit and really um, led a very large Salesforce implementation there, built a team, um, program tapped into my program management and change management. Um, that long story short led me to salesforce.org. I was in a pre sales role there as a success engagement manager. Um, and then I jumped to public sector where I am now and I am today and I'm almost, I'll have my five year surfboard for Salesforce this June. Um, but two interesting um, things. Um, one, uh, you know, along the way, I didn't prioritize my certifications and it, I, I left it to the very end. I got five certifications in 100 days. And trust me, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Um, so I'm very proud of my five um, certs. And uh, I put the vaccination uh, place there that's been from the public sector. It's something that has really taken over our roles in supporting contact tracing, vaccine management, unemployment insurance, you name it. And so it's been an interesting last couple of years in customer success. Um, so that's sort of me in a career nutshell. Um, Hillary, you can go to the next slide. This is me. Um, this is what gets me out of bed in the, in the morning. I love um, pictures and you guys getting to know kind of me as a person. 
um, I met my husband. I live in Annapolis, Maryland. My husband and I and our two um, two beagles are in Annapolis. And we met at the taxi stand there. I mean, doesn't everybody meet their spouse at a taxi stand? Um, and we love to travel and I love everything about um, Annapolis. Um, I, uh, including being a sponsor mom. So Tom and I, my husband and I sponsor midshipmen from the Naval Academy. This is um, three of, um, of our midshipmen that we sponsor. One's a pilot, um, one's a plebe, and one is uh, second class. Uh, and we have folks who have graduated. And it is um, something that I just love. I don't know if you're familiar with the Naval Academy, midshipmen, um, but we open up our home. We're our home away from home for them. And it just is an amazing thing to uh, be there for them and watch them grow uh, in their short time here at the Academy. So um, that's kind of me in a nutshell. So Hillary, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Sue. All right, so some of you may have seen this slide before. So a little bit about myself, similar to Sue having a, a non-traditional background to get here. So starting in that lower left, I'm originally from Michigan. I grew up in the middle of nowhere, one stoplight. I'm like, I need to get out of here. So of course, joined the military <laughs> um, and joined the Marines and was a basic hygiene equipment operator. So most people haven't heard of that MOS um, and basically think of Pauly Shore in the Army now. Um, so that was my primary MOS in the Marines. Um, and from there, I moved on and worked for Northrop Grumman and they paid for me to get uh, my master's degree um, on top of my uh, bachelor's degree that I had. And really important for me, um, the first one in my family to, uh, to have a college degree and really have that achievement. Um, so from there, as we go down, I met my husband who is an army veteran, did not meet him at a taxi stand. Um, that uh, that story is for another time. Um, and so we see him and my two boys there and we have our two dogs, a little bigger now, and two cats, so very busy household. Um, and then in the middle there is where I really transitioned um, and was introduced to the Salesforce ecosystem. I had the pleasure of working for a, a company that we trained uh, veterans that were going through Volk Rehab to be Salesforce administrators. And this was before the era of Trailhead. I was basically making Trailhead, so it was really interesting experience. And the, the picture that you see there is a, a Marine that I trained who was the first blind uh, veteran Salesforce administrator. So it was really a highlight of my experience getting to, to work there um, with that organization. So then in January 2015, I uh, just reached my seven year milestone here at Salesforce. I joined Salesforce, um, started out as a solution engineer, similar to David and others on the call. Um, spent time there really building out our healthcare vertical as that was new. And then I moved on to working with our partnership programs um, and currently being a success manager in the federal space. Um, and just really passionate about learning. The certifications, Trailhead, have been doing it from day one, um, active here in our Trailhead military. And as David mentioned, love to talk about all things healthcare. All right, so let's jump in here. All right, so talking about customer success. And so what soon I thought it would be good to do is really kind of talk about the customer 360 life cycle. What is customer success at Salesforce in those roles? So when I talk to um, a lot of individuals across the veteran community, it's, well, what is the difference and how does sales and success and how does this all fit together? Um, so what you can see here is that on the left side, we have sales. So I like to think of either things as being sales, pre-sales, and then kind of post-sales. So on that sales side, and as we can see down here on the left here, that's where like the solution engineers really live. So as we're doing that research, discovery, developing that initial point of view, doing demonstrations, you know, sales is going through all those motions. And then typically post sales is that we're on the right hand side where Sue and I live and breathe. And it's really making sure that those customers are successful, right? How are they using Salesforce? Are they receiving those benefits? Um, and then again, depending on the success manager and those accounts, um, it's really intertwined. So the sales team I work with, I text, I speak with them daily. You know, we are we are truly one team in support of the, the customers that we work with. All right. And then I will hand it over to Sue. Yep. So, you know, if you saw Hillary's slide, right, you saw what was on there, right, is a cycle. Uh, and I think that that really ties into what our ultimate goals are. Um, and it's very cyclical. 
it's also very relationship heavy, right? So if you kind of go around this wheel, um, you know, what is it that we're, we're after? And to me, it's about alignment, right? It's about adoption. It's about value and it's about trust, right? And if you know anything about Salesforce with four core pillars, you know, and trust is one of those. And, and that really rings true in, in our role. So we're trying to get to know them. We're trying to almost become one of them and speak their language, right? We, we want to be um, a trusted partner from the executives down to, you know, the, the folks that are mopping the floors. Um, and we need to be able to, to really be a chameleon at all of those levels. Um, we, uh, success is paramount, right, at Salesforce. So what did they buy? Are they using it? Do they have a plan to implement it? Um, are, they, are they failing at it? Are they trying to use it? And, and maybe we need to, to help them. Um, the the resource piece is a is a heavy piece of of our our jobs right if you're in the salesforce ecosystem you know how much information is out there right so i always try to cut through that and get my customers relevant information about training about um you know events coming up anything that is relevant to them and it's very prescriptive right so you'll see as i keep going around the wheel we're providing strategic guidance you know, it that also means we're doing tactical things too, right? So Hillary and I aren't always just stepping back and talking about our customers about their big vision. It's actually very rare. We're the ones that are trying to coax them along and, and keep at that that whole process of moving them in to realize like, why did you buy Salesforce in the first place? And, and how do we help you um, be the best at that? So along the way, we're building relationships, right? This job success, I don't think happens um, by accident. You really, you know, I always tell people you shouldn't wonder about success. We should know what that looks like um, and, and really understand, you know, how do we get there? So along the way, there's a lot of teamwork involved. I'll show you what the CSG um, kind of group looks like here in a second. Um, and then, of course, you know, knowing what they want to be when they grow up and aligning on their objectives. And so tons of relationship building. Um, we're strategic some days. We're tactical um, other days, but we're prescriptive every day. Um, so what does that look like? Um, Hillary, you can jump to the next slide for me. I, and this is a pretty good pyramid, um, understanding um, what the success um, group looks like. Um, we, um, Hillary and I are more of this um, high touch success manager. So we're on the, I guess it's gonna be, it's my left. Um, and then the success guide is uh, on the other side. Collectively, right, we're working in an, in an engagement model where we're trying to tackle topics. What is the the top priority? What are we, are we trying to solve a problem or are we trying to get to the next uh, rung in, in whatever success looks like? We have programs that help us along the way, right? That prescriptive word that I was talking about. There are repeatable success plays that we can tap into, but a lot of it is creativity. A lot of it is being um, there and meeting our customers at that point in their journey um, where they are. And um, I think Hillary and I tap into probably our experience more than any other training we've ever had of just figuring out how to be the best problem solvers um, that we can at the time. So lots of acronyms on this slide. Um, QSR stands for quarterly success review, right? So we're engaging on a regular level. Um, on the other side, we've got um, CSRs. That's a, yes, yeah, CSG is our customer success group, right? CSR is a customer success request. Um, and so Salesforce loves our acronyms. And, and this slide is, is uh, is uh, one that that has them on there. So uh, last thing I'll say about this is, is this is done by, exactly, <laughs> um, this is done by a big team of people, right? We've got high touch success managers like Hillary and I, right? But we also have portfolio leads. We have success managers and success guides. So CSG makes about 10% um, of uh, the entire company. There's tons of roles um, out there. We're going to show you how to go find um, some of those roles out there. But 
you do not have to be in the ecosystem for you know a dozen years right there are tons of opportunities uh, at the scale level um, and through our success guide so we'll tell you more about that in a second so hillary what did i miss on this slide that would be important to share well, hopefully you don't hear any barking dogs in the background. Um, what I was going to add here was that some of the conversations that I have with um, members from the, the community here are, you know, what does it look like? What is a day for you? What is, you know, what does a success manager do? So when you think about this slide, you know, some like Sue or myself, we may only have a handful of accounts. Some are many. So it really depends on that role and um, that group that you would be looking to perhaps work with, right? As far as if it's like a one-to-many, if it's a guide, if it's a success manager, and that's where something like Sue, myself, others within customer success can help you perhaps look at those roles or what are some of those questions that maybe you wanna to talk to the recruiter about that, what, what that would look like, because every success manager, um, you know, their experience is gonna be different or depending on that team that they work with and the accounts that they work with. You know, so really understanding um, what is what is the right fit for you, um, and perhaps how we can help with um, those types of questions. Yeah. If I if I may, this is Elio. Um, when you hear accounts, some of the accounts are very complex. Uh, you're talking about multiple orgs, tens of thousands of users. <laughs> so don't think when you hear an account, we have different, obviously different sizes of accounts, but. Uh, in some areas where you have a designated success manager, um, it could be because they do have complex accounts. So if you're into complexity, it, it's all there from simple to very complex. Yep, perfect. And the, and the one word that we haven't said, right, is the, that word premier, right? So it is on, on this slide, right? You see premier only for accelerators and premier scale. Well, you don't get to have a Sue Marriott or a Hillary on your account as an assigned, I use that in, in quotes, unless you are Premier, right? So, and and Hillary and I are even dealing with GovCloud Premier. Um, so, um, so these are things as a Premier customer, but but also just sort of knowing where does this sit um, is, uh, is in our premier side for our premier customers. It doesn't mean that non-premier customers don't get um, access to, to smart people and smart things, um, but just as you go up the scale, um, as um, Elia was saying, the, the more complex um, it is, the more money you spend, the more, the higher you go up uh, the pyramid and, uh, you know, and, and different resources are, are there. So, I think we could flip, yeah, perfect. So um, I wanted to include this slide, right, to help you guys kind of hone in on, on this, right? I always think if you're trying to transition um, or if you're looking to get into to, to a new group, and you know, I do believe in that whole word, that imposter syndrome where, where we feel like we're imposters and we don't belong. And let me tell you, you guys, everybody belongs. This is, this network, um, uh, and the community of, of Salesforce, the the billion dollar economy that we have, right? It isn't, the jobs out there aren't just Salesforce, they're with our partners, they're with um, businesses and, and nonprofits and, you know, themselves. So, so that network is so vast, right? And yes, so customer success looks at these roles, but I want you to, sort of backwards engineer yourself here. So Hillary and I provide these types of real um, prescriptive items to our customers, right? We're aligning on goals and objectives. We have that relationship. We're providing value. We have a level of skill, right? We're helping them to avoid technical debt, right? And we're helping them with aligning on our product, right? Three releases a year, you know, groups, developers have to keep up with, right? So I bolded words for you that I think you can tap into, right, every day. You guys have documented <laughs> everything um, for years and years and years. You know how to put a good document together and it's all about getting that plan together, right? So we can check off, um, could, can we help align? Absolutely. 
you guys have built relationships in your lives, right? You, you walk out the door, you have to build relationships. You, you have relationships under your own home. We all know how to do that. And the best way to do that is to have communication. We know communication in the military up and down, right? So we can cover that too, right? Business value, right? That's about planning and about understanding the why, right? The success measures, this is success metrics, right? All about measures and value. You guys can tap into that. And some of you are maybe even have analytical minded or analytical jobs. That is massive. There is a huge need for, think of the data that is coming, the volume of data um, with products like Tableau CRM um, and, and everything. Uh, analytics is a huge spot. And I, I bet a lot of you have tapped, have had that experience in the past, right? operational readiness right we all in the military right have to have some some form of readiness you guys can knock that one out of the out of the park um uh, and again you guys have the discipline that's needed right to really make sure that you're matching that and understanding the skill level and keeping up with that and then kind of rounding things out right technical debt you guys probably had to do assessments again i'm making some general um, thoughts about uh, some of your roles, uh, but I'm sure that you had to go in, make a, uh, uh, an assessment. You probably didn't have all of the answers in front of you. You had to go with your gut and you had to say, hey, look, uh, this is what I know and this is the, the direction I'm going to go with. That's exactly what Hiller and I have to do. We have to make decisions and we don't have all the facts sometimes. Right. And then finally, right, it's just a, a making an evaluation. Again, tapping into that. Do I know all the facts? Probably not. Right. But I'm going to make my best judgment um, and move forward on that. And I think that when you see this, hopefully you can see very relatable paths um, and skill sets that we operate on on a, on a daily basis. Um, I'll have one final thought on here is is. Um, it, yeah, sure, certified double ranger, but every single day I tap into the change management um, in my past and that that ability to change people, process, and technology. And to just know that that it it is the 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 culmination of your careers. It isn't just one job you had. It's it's really I've added up everything along the the way to um, to help um, sort of form. Uh, my skill set uh, today. So hopefully this was great that you guys could see yourself in, in here. Um, we've got a question, um, uh, Michael here, uh, uh, two seconds. Um, Hillary, do you have anything else to to add and then we'll go to Michael? Okay. Hi, uh, I just want to say that's, that's great. I've constantly tried to figure out how to translate to civilian uh, what I've done in that little chart there that really in the way you broke it down just went through to me so thank you i pre i'm going to be making changes in my resume <laughs> thank you excellent. excellent good yeah michael you know and this goes for everyone i you know it's it's a, it's almost a backwards engineering process right where you you see the role you see the um the um sort of the okay. job requirement and you can just backwards engineer um, your way. And hopefully this kind of helps uh, tee that up for you. So I think we only have a couple more slides, Hillary. Uh, and I'm not going to drain this, this one. Um, we will share all of these resources. Um, this to me, Hillary and I wanted to, to bring this in as a, a sort of a prescription of like, well, what does that, what does all of this look like? Um, and the one thing that we, we always do is again our, every customer is on a journey and no journey is the same and so it's getting our customers the right resource at the right time right knowing the relationship aligning on those goals understanding their priorities and really it, it doesn't always follow this beautiful path trust me we left out the booby traps uh you know and the uh and the and the right hand to the sharp right hand turns um but this is a, a good way of of just the commitment that salesforce has to success the programs that we put together and we base it off of where they are in in their journey 
Um, and we repeat this, right? This is a, another thing that is cyclical and it's it's something that just repeats all the time. Even the getting started, right? You have new people who come in and out. You get people who have promotions. Being in the public sector, right? That door, um, you know, revolves a, a little bit um, more so than, than in other markets. And so, um, you know, we find ourselves uh, on this again and again. Right. We always want our customers to be implementing new apps. That's the beauty of Salesforce. Right. You can implement, you know, with governance. Right. You can implement um, multiple apps on one org. Um, but maybe you have a cause for for multi orgs like we heard earlier. So, you know, implementation readiness. Um, no go live. Uh, no two go lives are the same. Uh, they get complex and hairy. You can have a simple go live and be done in two weeks. Um, you can have a complex go live with multiple, um, you know, uh, integrations and millions of records to load, right? And that's going to take a lot longer. Um, so, so we kind of adapt our support there and um, always cheering our cu customers on to, to success. So this is just a, a good sample. Um, Hillary, anything to add on this one? I think just looking at this slide, it's also a good um, reference point as you think about what what sparks your interest, right? You know, maybe you thought it was customer success, but you're you're like, you know what, that data and security knowledge mo uh, model or the governance release management. There might be other areas that you haven't thought about. So I think the beauty of like the ecosystem is there's so many different opportunities out there, but then it also can feel like overwhelming, and that's where this community is here to support, right? Like, what are those other areas that maybe you haven't thought of, and, and slides like this can help spark some of those uh, questions you may have? Um, if so, how much time should you spend in the trenches as an admin? Because, like, for me, you know, you sort of got, in my mindset, I've always had to pay my dues and sort of learn the inner workings of something before I start branching out and i'm just wondering in salesforce do you think you need to spend a year or two in the trenches so to say i i think there's no and i see or david would uh, chime in here too there's no right answer right so i would say regardless if you've been an admin for a day a week a year 10 years and you're like i want to be an architect or i want to go explore this like do it right so there's not like a, you have to be in a role a certain amount of time and there might be some benefits that you'll learn there that'll help you. But if you are interested in something, I say go for it, right? <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd take you. Oh, go ahead, Sue. I, I, I would just add that, yeah, there there is no right answer. There's no wrong answer. Um, I I know that for me, I learned personally, I learned by that hands-on keyboard. And, and so, you know, if you're the type that can learn um, and conceptualize it through trailhead and those hands-on activities, great. I had to do the work. I had to put it in. It's just sort of how I am. Um, and that did help me because I could be at that executive level and know exactly sort of what needed to happen. I knew that record type, uh, just, you know, record types, right? A simple thing. But when I'm hearing that, you know, they want to solve something. I would know that my developer and architect should be using this. And so the, it helps you along the way and depend, doesn't matter what, what your role is. Um, and, and I would also um, say that it, it, it really is the culmination of, of things. And depending on where you want to go, um, I've worked with success managers who've been at a consulting firm um and serviced thousands of customers myself i i was at one customer for a very long time right and was able to see that change and kind of turn the titanic right so there's no recipe for there's no cookie cutter for even even our role right of the the diverse backgrounds that that we have and so um i think the admin is the foundation for any any role any area, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that um, just as a certification, whether you, you know, have that as a job. Uh, there are so many also admins, Michael, I don't know. Is that a term that everybody knows if I, I'm throw, I've thrown it out there a couple of times. I just want to make sure everybody knows what an also admin means. And that's likely a good, you know, 
that's a great place to land. Sorry, David, go ahead. Yeah, I would, I would just piggyback on that. And I agree with, with everything um, that both of you said. It, it, it's a great question, Michael. It's a fundamental question. How long do you practice doing something before you jump in with both feet to do something, right? And so my, my mindset is you, you're never going to be fully ready for any position you take on. There's always going to be, you know, um, things that you're not going to foresee and, and there's going to be challenges there. I think you jump in when when you've grown enough to where it's a stretch assignment, but you're not overwhelmed. And so case in point, like when I was, a, um, you know, I just learned about Salesforce. I jumped on Trailhead. I was doing Trailhead for about three months. And I was like, okay, I know enough to be dangerous now. I'm going to go get myself a volunteer admin role, which I did. And no way did I know everything that there was to know. I spent hours and weekends learning and, you know, um, and teaching myself the platform. Um, but I knew enough that, um, I was doing okay in the role because it was a stretch assignment. I wasn't overwhelmed and I knew the resources that I could call on if I didn't know the answer to a question. And so I would hundred percent agree with, with Hillary to say, you know, just do it right. No, 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 uh, what your support resources are and, and take on the challenge. Uh, cause if you wait forever, you're never going to be ready. Lindsay. Yeah, I'll just add that I'm actually on the recruiting team for our CSG team. I support the services pillar. And a lot of times it just depends on the grade levels that we're looking for, the kind of experience that we're looking for. Um, you know, a lot of our job descriptions are um, kind of inclusive of, of a lot that we're looking for. And it just um, is kind of an ebb and flow situation of what we're seeing and what we're, what again, what we're looking for. So um, if you see something that is even close to um you know what you have and what we're looking for absolutely apply um fully encourage that thank you Lindsay. Thank so you. i think i think there was a question about what does also admin mean um so i just want to answer that 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 means that you have your day job and you're also a salesforce admin as in you'll go out there there's a probably hundreds of thousands of companies that have roles and they also have Salesforce and they need somebody to just on a part time basis um, to to really help set up users, um, change page layouts. It's a lot of the declarative um, things, it's a great way to um, really get opportunities to learn. Uh, it's how I started um, and it really is uh, it is a great path forward. So you'd be a project manager and also the Salesforce admin. You'll be an analyst and also a Salesforce admin. And so it's just a um, a portion of your job. It's not full time. And it, and it really it helps out the, the business. It helps you out. It helps you, you know, continue to hone your skills. And so that also admin is just a term that, that's out there. So I just wanted to uh, touch on that. Thanks, Sue. That was my first experience also. My yeah. the CEO said, Hey, can you also find some CRM, maybe the Salesforce thing and like stand it up and just like yep. manage it? Sure. Jump yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> I was in training. I, I didn't know anything. And here I implemented sales, you know, sales cloud. So yeah, it, it happens to the best of us. And you will find as you network and you go to events, uh, eventually, if we, you know, start to see each other again. Um, you will see that that a, a lot of us, a lot of us have that also admin uh, start. And so um, I highly encourage it. All right, last well, couple slides. Yeah. Um, yep. So really what we're showing here is, this is um, just an example of some of those resources. And this is what we both give and promote to our customers, as Sue mentioned earlier, you know, what we're really driving them towards, um, but also available to you. So whether it's webinars, communities, um, as we're looking at those events that, you know, Sue had mentioned, Trailhead, there is a lot out there. David does a great job of sharing, you know, some of that information, but highly, highly, highly <laughs> encourage like that networking, that events, you know, reach out. You're doing it now. You're here, right? So how you can build that network and learn and just really um, thrive in the ecosystem like we have. All right. And then uh, Lindsay may like this slide here. So I um, just want to put the link here for a success position. So if you go on our careers website, and I just put an example here, but if you check off the box for customer success group, um, I had uh, US as the location, but just a tip as far as um, being able to filter through and, and look at some of those open positions. And as we mentioned, maybe 
you know, some of the initial requirements, but again, you know, if, if that's something you're interested in, reach out to the community, talk about it. Don't just think that, you know, I'm maybe not qualified. Definitely, you know, definitely have that conversation. Oh, and Sue has the bonus question. Go ahead, Sue. I love it. All right. And does anyone know who the first success manager was at Salesforce? And David Borgilio can't answer. Sorry, who? <laughs> it was not Astro. <laughs> anyone? Tom Brady. No, he is a goat. Um, yeah, so Elsie Miller got it right. Mark Benioff uh, is um, our first success manager. Um, Mark Benioff is a wonderful writer, um, or he, he, he has wonderful writers who write for him. Uh, but he has multiple books and um, and so it's in there's a great story about it in the behind the cloud uh, book. So I highly recommend if you if you really are passionate about Salesforce and getting to know um, what makes us tick as a company, I highly recommend um, one of Mark's books. Um, and uh, uh, certainly I have a couple copies I can loan out um, if uh, if if anyone uh, wants one or just hop on Amazon. Um, but they are, they're great stories. Um, and they really um, show you the heart of our company uh, and really what, what makes us tick and success is really at the heart of it. And, um, you know, Hillary and I are very proud to be part of the success group here at Salesforce. We're even um, more proud to be on the um, two members of our public sector team but you saw on the slide before, right? They are hiring uh, customer success managers or, or or different roles across our CSG uh, customer success group, you know, on a daily basis. So CSG is where it is, yes. So um, I think that's all the slide where um, we had um, for you guys. Um, Hillary and I are are uh, both on. We're on LinkedIn. We're on Twitter. Um, even though I'm not a huge fan of Twitter, but I'm on it. You can find me there. And I am also on Veterati if anyone is on there. And um, I offer uh, hours there as well as uh, Hillary. Um, and uh, I think that's a, uh, David, I think you, you are uh, a big Veterati fan as well. So. Yep, uh, indeed. Yeah. Um, we would love to spend the remaining time answering your questions um or um dave just a quick psa um yeah. if you're sending folks and 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 i'm also open and, and on linkedin send a little note say hey i saw you on dave Navas uh session uh a lot some of us uh have been on linkedin for a long time and we get a ton of just spam request i actually decline like 90 percent of the requests because i don't know who they are so if you if you want to practice good etiquette just you know if you're reaching out to sue david or anybody else here just say hey saw you on david's uh session and would like to connect um i see some returning folks i see phil there and other folks who i've had some sessions with and uh always open to network with the, the group it's a great point elio and for those folks that may be sending out 15 to 20 connection requests a day which which is what i typically do and, and i recommend it because there's so many people in the ecosystem um that you can connect with what i've done is i've come up with a little like um excerpt that i i paste into like a you know google doc that i have just hanging out and it will be a standard introduction of, of who i am and, and and why i'd like you to add me to your network and then so you just copy and paste that into the the linkedin or the you know the, um connection request and then personalize it with their name and maybe a couple other things and that saves you time but to elio's point it also does dramatically increase the chances that your connection request will be successful all right so uh i i always have questions ready to go but i wanted to give uh you all the opportunity to ask hillary and sue questions so i'll give you a moment uh to either raise your hand i see um sandeep you've got uh your hand raised you have the floor Hi, everyone. Uh, yes, actually, it's related to uh, Ilio's uh, suggestion. So uh, when I send connect like requests to connections, the only problem is that I don't have Prime account. 
and uh, LinkedIn doesn't let us send message to somebody. Um, for example, like if I send an invite to school right now, sorry, um, uh, it says uh, you don't have Prime account, so it doesn't let me send a message. So is there uh, like, do we need to have a Prime account for that? No. Um, so what you do is you, you, you click to add the connection. And uh, if you're doing it from the desktop, um, it will give you the option to add a note. And so you can just paste your note in there and you don't have to have a, a Prime or a Premier account um, to, to be able to do that. I, I don't have one. Uh, I haven't had one for years and it lets me do it every time. I think in mobile, it, in some screens in mobile, it just, it, it'll send the, the connection request automatically without the option to send the note. So you want to find that one screen on the desktop where it, it asks you if you want to send the note. I think it's from your, your main screen. Thank you. Yeah, great question. Uh, Dennis, you've got your hand raised. My bad. Uh, I like that one slide about your, where you showed kind of the roadmap to, you know, to the launch and uh, the different steps and roadmap, uh, parts of the road, important milestones of the roadmap. But for training, are there any rules of thumb you could suggest for, okay, I'm an admin, we got to do a whole bunch of end user training, new system, they haven't seen it before. How do we come up with an estimate for training, number of training hours set aside? Okay. Well, to me, I, and I didn't come from a consulting background, but I'm going to pretend I did and use that word, it depends, right? So that's like the classic consulting answer. It depends on your users. Are we talking a bunch of millennials? And I don't mean to be, an, I'm not being an ageist, right? Uh, are we talking millennials with a really simple app like Uber that they can just go to and figure it out, DoorDash, right? Or are we talking a very complex process with flows um, and we're talking people who've been in their jobs for 30 years, right? You're going to take a very different approach to that. Um, the other thing you're going to do is want to offer different types of training. So trail, we're looking at Trailhead. Um, do you guys know that we also sell, and I'm not in sales, I'm, you guys know I'm in CSG, um, but we sell um, my Trailhead. And what you can do is just, you guys are used to our, I'm assuming everybody knows Trailhead and knows how we sort of bucket our learning and you can take a quiz. So we give that as a product, we, we have that as a product where folks can customize the content, right? And they can roll out training materials. So you can actually build and have your corporate training right in Salesforce through my Trailhead. So that's a product. Um, that's similar to an LMS. Um, that team would kill me if they knew I called it even an LMS. They call it a, a training experience. And so um, that is an, an option. I will end by saying this is just, I, I spent a lot of years in training. Um, the, the change management is, um, is something that gets left to the end. Everyone, you know, uh, rushes uh, at the end. They don't prepare. They don't prepare the users. So as much time as you can to learning and as much time as you can to change, right? And it, it is about their role. It is about resources. It's about where do I go for, for help and, and having that support. And you can, you know, you can almost turn yourself into your own customer success director at where you work now um, if, if that leads to it. So I will pause. I'll come up for air. I'll stop sharing my screen too. Um, but definitely leverage all of these resources um, there. So, all right. Dennis, um, I want to just piggyback what Sue said as a project manager um, in the delivery side of in Salesforce. So one of the things that I like to do is budget out like some time frames for workshops for to to do training for the user at the end of any implementations so that it could be anywhere from two to three weeks. Like Sue said, it really depends. But in your recap as a project manager, you should always include like your basic, you know, what um, what our lingo means, what where they could go to do the trailheads. And I always include that, whether they know Salesforce or not, but they also could always go back and leverage that because, and um, be, be engaging with your um, change managers, because when you leave a project, you know, they need to be still be wow at what we did for them. 
and then be able to continue on be successful without you. Those are all great points. Thank you, uh, Sue and, and Lena. I would also add, you know, if you're on the implementation side, you can oftentimes uh, be able to sometimes limit the amount of training that's necessary by turning over really high quality artifacts like solution design documents and things that mm -hmm. go through what you built, uh, where to find it, why it was built. Uh, that will help as well. Um, we've got about 10 minutes left and Lindsay had asked a question earlier in chat and then Jamie will go to you for your question. Lindsay asks, Hillary and Sue, after earning the admin cert, what certs do you recommend and what certs do both of you have? Yeah, so I'll start with that. So I think for um, even before the admin, is it, is it app developer now, or it was the original uh, <laughs> the the platform app developer? Um, that being a good one to dip your uh, your toes in the water with. For me, you know, first time taking an admin exam, failed the first time, and it was you know um, a lot to to learn. Um, I think for our role, you know, we're looking at admin, advanced admin, um, and then the service cloud and sales cloud consultants. Right, because that really, you know, the admin exams are really more technical, right? Like getting into record types and getting into like specific ways to work with the platform versus the consultants is more of that scenario based, right? You have a customer um, that is looking to stand up a call center or what are the type of metrics, right? So it really is more of that consultative view, um, which is really important for CSG. And back on the um, on the roles, it'll list like, you know, what are the requirements or what is preferred? Um, but I think that admin, advanced admin, sales and service cloud consultants are really the uh, the key certs for our role. Now, so if there's anything else you'd add there. Yeah, those are the, the ones I have. I have admin, advanced admin, platform app builder, sales cloud consultant, and service cloud consultant. And uh, those are great, great foundations. Um, you know, and the, the, the resources that are out there uh, that's a topic for another day, David. I'm sure you've covered that a, a million times and very repetitive information. Don't feel if you're studying for your certs, don't don't feel like you have to learn it uh, your, you know, yourself. There's a massive community. Um, you're, you're looking at some of them right here, but um, so much help is online. Yeah, great points. Thank you, Jamie. Um, you have your hand raised. You're up. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, actually, I wanted to offer a perspective from the non-public sector side, because everything that I've been hearing is very consistent with the enterprise side. And so I'm a senior principal success manager on the marketing cloud side, specifically for Datarama, which is a marketing and analytics product that we have. And through mergers and acquisitions, there's um, likely a very good likelihood actually that there will be more products that come under clouds and so while a bulk of the conversation today i've heard is around public cloud health cloud service cloud sales cloud there are a lot of other clouds here and as uh, another theme i've been hearing which is around you know how do we approach it i want to echo the sentiment regardless of the cloud that you may be interested in every cloud has a very strong community and you may hear some terms like community or being a trailblazer or connecting in different uh, paths and forums i just wanted to encourage everyone that whatever your interest may be today it may change and the beauty of your network is that you may find paths and and people you meet that might be different today and tomorrow versus say you know a few years from now and so i just wanted to encourage everyone that your your path may be different today and and that's okay because we really are one team across all of our clouds and we all are here to support each other because at the end of the day we all want to learn we all want to show up and we all want to see our customers succeed so i just wanted to offer that in case everyone um you know was was focused on you know one cloud there really are many clouds and who knows there may be more that that are jumped up because we've just seen health cloud and vaccine cloud be born through um, through the pandemic and innovation is one of our core pillars and that's something that we really focus on is um producing new products for customers and for people here to to work on and show up and do their best work every day. So I just wanted to offer that as um, as perspective and, and thank you for allowing me to join today. Oh, thank you, Jamie. That's a great perspective and I, I appreciate you sharing that. It's all about the community and you're right, the ecosystem is vast. So there's, there's so much you can learn and do here. Um, very much appreciate all those points. 
Does anyone else have, we've got, you know, probably five minutes left. Anyone else have any questions they wanted to ask of, of Sue or, or Hillary or the group in general? Dan, you've got your hand raised. Yeah, I'm just curious to know um, what your experience is with how uh, your your bosses measure your success as a customer success manager. Um, you know, I guess that's it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hillary, you want me to take it or? Yeah, go ahead. So um, there are company goals uh, that are set um, and they're really kind of specific to um, to Hillary and I in our in our sector, right? So a, a sector is going to have its its own goals, um, but uh, attrition is one, right? So attrition is when you know they they bought uh, ten thousand licenses and they come to you after year one or year two and go, we o- we only need half of these, right? And they attrit half of that. So attri- we're we're measured on attrition. We're measured on adoption, um, and we're we're also um, measured on growth and, and growth doesn't necessarily mean dollars, right? We're not in sales. We don't have a quota. Um, you know, now that's just specific to our group and there, you know, every role is different, but, um, may, mainly growth adoption and attrition. And when you think of that, all of those topics are, are, are one. If you're, if you're driving adoption, you're likely driving growth and you're reducing attrition and so um it's it's a happy cycle um but but the secret to that is also having strong relationships if you go back to the one of the first slides that hillary showed right with the connection to sales right we are we are aligned at the hip with um our counterpart on the sales side and we leverage each other a lot in conversations and growth and so um I, I just find that a, a big secret to success too. Hillary, what did I m- miss on our on our measures? Um, I think you got that. I think the the additional point I would make, Dan, is that you know over the seven years I've had different managers, had different metrics that I was accountable for, and it's been an incredible experience at every manager, every team being so supportive. So I think that's a common thread at Salesforce. There's no, there's no surprises. Like it's not, you know, tomorrow the manager says, oh, hey, you missed that goal. You're not getting this. Or you're not getting that. Like, you know what's expected. You have regular like meetings. You're, everything is reviewed, right? There's no surprises, but there's also just that I've had the pleasure of open, transparent, amazing relationships with managers uh, across every role. Yeah. Um, Dan, I guess I'll ask Dan, but this goes for everyone. Has everyone ever heard of a term? Remember, I said we have a lot of acronyms. There's a term that Salesforce uses called a V2 mom. Yeah. <laughs> so V2 mom stands for, oh God, here's a test, right? Vision, value, <laughs> methods, obstacles, and measures, right? So vision, what are we doing? Value, why are we doing this? Um, methods, how are we going to do this? obstacles what stands in our way and metrics right how do we measure it and so right now our company um next week at sales kickoff will be kind of understanding what our methods are um we get opportunities to be method leader i'm a method leader on the business value side um so there's tons of opportunities we may not be a, a people manager um, or a portfolio lead, but you have tons of opportunities to lead projects like that. So method owners and, and things. And so V2 Mom, look it up. Um, and uh, it's a wonder. There's a trail uh, trailhead on it. It's wonderful, especially this time of year where we've reset our year. Some of us do resolutions. I'm terrible at mine, um, but it's a good time if you're resetting um, your goals for the year. Look up the V2 mom as a nice structure and framework um, to really hit your goals and get measured on it. So, thank you both. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for the question, Dan. All right, we are at time, folks. Um, but before we do close, I wanted to thank Sue and Hillary very much for spending their time with us to talk about customer success uh, career paths and roles and everything that goes into that. So, I appreciate it. Thank you both. It's been an awesome session. Hopefully we'll see you again next week. I won't be here, but Elio will be taking over for me while I'm on travel on my honeymoon. So thank you, Elio. And uh, we've got a lot of, of great sessions coming up. Enjoy your Wednesday evening and enjoy the rest of your week. Thanks so much, everyone.